everyone, I'm going to show you step by step from scratch how to create your custom clusters with work clusters. So let's get into it quickly. First of all, I'm going to create a cube here. In this first example, I'm going to show you how to change the material of this cube as we go inside it. So quite simple. Well, in this case, it's more a rectangle than a cube now, but it doesn't really matter. So um, the first thing to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the cluster component. I'm going to add a cluster group. So I'm going to call one. The name is entirely up to you. Now I'm going to add a non-tree of type material change. Now I can already drag and drop my cube inside this uh, render list. Now, as always, remember that each um, entry type has its own list. And um, this list basically means whatever is inside is going to be affected by this um, cluster, right? So uh, in this case, we only have one. Now, a quick tip. In the case that, uh, and you will most likely have to do this anyway, but in the case that you want and have to select and drag and drop hundreds, if not thousands of renderers or light or whatever in this list, I actually wrote a tool to help you do that. So to use it, you simply um, select the game object with a cluster component on it. You lock the window, the inspector window of Unity. Then you go under Blink, Work Cluster, Manager, Utilities. And here, what it lets you do, for example, here, um, let me select this building here. You see that we have the house selected with a lot of game object in it. And if you drag and drop this in the game object parent and click renderer, you see that it automatically selected every single game object inside this game object with a renderer component. Same goes for light and particle system. In this case, it doesn't have any. But if I now go ahead and add the light cluster to the list of game object parent, and click light you see that the two lights are now selected so very cool and now if i select uh, the renderers again i can now drag and drop the selection inside the renderer list and as you can see we have now all the renderers and it was very very easy and quick to select them so uh, yeah nice little tip and um, i think this will save you a lot of time now i'm going to put this back to one of course because we don't need this and i'm going to go ahead and collapse that so um let's do um, what's left First of all, I'm going to drag and drop a default material on this cube. Um, and then I'm going to have to tell this entry what to do when we enter it. So in this case, I wanted to change the material to this one and back to default when we get out. So that's it for the cluster components. Now I have to add a cluster collider. In this case, you note that the cluster collider and the cluster component are on the same game object but it's not needed to do that. If I select the house again, as you can see, um, it has the cluster component on it and the cluster colliders are in their own game object here. So we have floor one, floor two, and so on. But in this case, it's going to be all on the same game object. So let me put this up so it's a bit uh, more organized. Here, very important, I'm going to set the collider to trigger, otherwise we can't enter the cluster. And I'm going to drag and drop the cluster inside the cluster field and select which cluster group should be um, triggered. But in this case, we only have one anyway. I'm going to go ahead and press play now. And as you can see, as I enter the um, rectangle now, it is now changing material. If I go ahead and um, change the entry type to render, for example, it's going to disappear completely. If I keep the shadows, the shadows are gonna stay and so on. You can of course um, do whatever you want now from um, this base. Now let's focus on an example which is a bit more advanced. So let me put my character closer to this house here. So here we have a house with uh, two floors. So we have the first floor here, the second floor. There is nav mesh for it, etc. So our character is able to go inside this house. Um, but the issue here is that as we go inside, as you can see, we literally don't see anything, right? Which is one of the reasons to use work cluster. So um, we will go ahead and set up the entire cluster for this house from scratch. The first step is to add the cluster component on top. I'm going to add two cluster groups. The first name is going to be um, floor one. As always, the names don't matter, right? It's just a way for you to identify them and to keep things um, organized. And I'm going to add a few entries. Actually, in this case, three. The first one is going to be material change. I'm going to log the inspector so it is now easy for me to select things and still drag and drop them here. And the first thing I want to do when I enter floor one, uh, because the way you have to see it here, uh, let me collapse all. So like I said, we have floor one and floor two cluster group, right? 
the way you have to see it is whatever you put inside floor one is what you want to happen to this house when you are inside floor one and when later we um, start doing the part for floor two it's going to be whatever you want to happen to this building when we are inside floor two. but for now let's uh, focus on floor one so here like i said we have a material change and what i want to do is change the material of those front walls i'm not going to make them disappear i'm instead going to make them kind of transparent so when we enter we have the transparent material and when we exit the default one and here's the valid condition now the second uh, entry is going to be of type renderer and i'm going to keep the um, shadows so here what i'm going to do is disable uh, or rather hide the uh, floor to the ground and the roof so let me go ahead and drag and drop those two here and here i don't really have anything to change it's already set up for me so when we enter this is going to be disabled when we exit enabled again so here condition and now i could already uh, go in game and test that but uh, we first have to set up the collider um, cluster colliders so here you see i set up a collider for floor one and one for floor two here on the floor one um well actually on both of them i'm going to add the cluster collider components and here i'm going to drag and drop the house and select floor one on the second one i'm also going to drag and drop the house but in this case select floor two what this means is when we enter this collider we want to to trigger the floor one here cluster group of this uh, cluster and we when we enter the second collider in floor two we want to trigger the cluster two so the floor two here which is here in this case it doesn't have anything so uh, let's go ahead and test that so as you can see now as we enter the um the uh, building you see that we get some errors here but this is because we didn't yet set up this um entry here if i go ahead and add the condition here now it's not going to throw an error um but anyway so as we enter the building you see that the um walls the front walls are becoming transparent and the roof and the second floor ground are now gone which is exactly what we wanted but we still have one problem with this controller um you see that as we click on um a certain object in this case the floor or the roof or whatever it's going to try to move there and a uh, work cluster lets you fix this uh, because in this case if i click here for example here i would want my character to go here right not on the second floor so let's fix this the third um entry type is going to be of type player and i'm also um, in this case going to select the uh, ground two and roof add to the game object list we don't need to change the layer of child because there are no child but what i'm going to do is that when we enter floor one those two game objects are going to be set to ignore raycast and when we go out they are going to be set back to uh, workable and now i'm going to make sure to add a condition here okay cool so now i'm going to uh, be able to go inside and click on the first floor without any issue so cool um, as we can see now the floor one is completed but we need to do the floor two because as i go here the floor two is still not set up at all so let's collapse everything now and focus on floor two and add a few entries just like before so one of material change one of render and one of layer change in this case uh, floor two of course is going to have different um list here because we don't want to affect the same things so um for the material change we only want to change the material of this front wall here and i'm going to set it to transparent default and assign the condition now for the render part this time we only want to hide the roof and we want to keep the shadow and just assign the condition and for the layer change same we only want to change the uh, roof so ignore recast default and um, condition now we can already go in game and test that but you will see that there is one more thing we need to do so if i now go ahead and go to floor two you see that we have an issue here so what's happening here pretty much i'm going to show you um in the scene so you understand exactly why we will need to do uh, what we will do next so let me show you with the character here so here we have our character who is working up the stairs right um in this case as you can see the collider is pretty big right which means that here already let's say that uh, we were at this level on the stairs 
hero characters the problem with it is that we are both in the floor one and in the floor two as you can see the uh, floor two collider is here and the collider of the character is already inside so um the issue here is that we are in two clusters at the same time and the problem is when we touch the floor two the uh, floor two is going to show and as we go here and exit the um, floor one cluster it's going to try and run its logic again which is going to mess up the look of floor two how we wanted it to be so that's why uh, work clusters has something we called override so if you go to floor one here and go to the override tab here as you can see we have entries and override we can now go ahead and simply add an override and what we're going to say is when we enter floor one we want to override floor two this is not going to happen if you are not already in floor two. so if we pass this door here the override is going to have no effect but this override is going to have effect when we were already in floor two and we go back to floor one which means that we were here we enter the stairs we are still in um, the cluster floor two and we are also now in floor one so in this case we want to hide the roof and everything like before and now simply same thing i'm going to go to floor two add an override and we're going to say that when we enter floor two we will now want to cancel floor one so now if i press play and put my character back like it was before you will see that it now works uh, perfectly so we first go to floor one and now we go to floor two and it's perfect it transitioned perfectly and now we are only in floor two and as i go back outside you can see that it goes back to the uh, floor one setup and transition perfect so this is very important because as you can see if i now remove those again you see that uh, things will break in this case it was kind of fine at first but as you can see things just don't work how they should um, work but it's very simple uh, those override like i said you just add them and say hey if we enter floor one and we're already you know in floor two then cancel it etc so that's pretty much how it works let me know if you have any uh, question or suggestion about this whole thing um, of course in this case this was a uh, box building uh, made of cubes and rectangles and things like that obviously your buildings are going to be made of um, other things and probably hundreds of game objects sometimes if you have props etc but the process is exactly the same and just like i showed you i uh, use the um, manager window here and utilities tab to select all those things so it's going to help you a lot and when you work on something with actual props and things in it i highly suggest that you organize your building that way so you have a main parent with a cluster component and then you set up floor one floor two and even in those for example you could have another thing here called props which will contain all your props in floor one and then it's very 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 easy for you to um create your cluster group so for example if you wanted uh, to select all mesh renders inside your props here and you would want to have a specific entry for that you will just go ahead here about here and select render in this case of course there are none so it selects nothing but um yeah that's just the way you will do it so again like i said if you have any question let me know here in the comment or on discord um as well as suggestions so thank you for watching and see you in the next video